drugs are a bet with the mind. Jim Morrison Chapter 1 The Early Years These are memories of my very colourful life. My very first memory is of a place called Cannon Street. I'm on our sofa with our greyhound. I'm around five or six years old. The front door open, back door open. Mam's in the kitchen cooking the Sunday dinner. Smells great. Pisto advert always reminds me of this particular day. I hear a commotion outside. It's getting louder. It's my dad's voice. He bursts into our little front room. Pulls lots of money out of his pockets and puts it onto the table. Excited was an understatement. Dad's won the young bird race. It's quite a few quid. Everyone in the house is happy, including Mam too. The young bird race is pigeons. Pigeons were very popular. Probably the reason I remember this day is because it's a good memory. You tend to remember the good ones. Memories, that is. My dad was from Irish descent. Me, my dad and grandad are all called Patrick Maloney. My granddad was from Mitchellstown, Southern Ireland. He came over here, married my nana, Lizzie. They had five kids, two boys, my dad and Uncle Billy, and three girls, Lila, Doreen and Eileen. I cannot remember my granddad. He went back to Ireland and left nana Lizzie to bring the kids up on her own. It's rumoured that he then went to Australia and had a whole new family. My mam Jean was a Cannon Street girl. Her mam, Evelyn, my nana, also had another daughter, my auntie Kathleen. And their dad, my granddad, Albert, we called him Pop. He was crippled at work from the waist down. He ended up in a wheelchair. Our house in Cannon Street was on Tomlinson Street. It was a two up, two down. There was no bathroom. The bath was a tin bath on a nail in our backyard. The toilet was also outside in a corner of our backyard. I guess times were hard. Not just for us, but for most families in those days. My mam was a housewife. Penny, headscarf and ten woodbines. Think Hilda Ogden from Coronation Street and you get the picture. She never went over the doorstep. Dad was a stevedore, posh name for a docker. And in those days it was a poorly paid job, but very physical. I don't really remember much more about Cannon Street. In my later years, it seemed everyone's families came from Cannon Street. I suppose every town and city has its own Cannon Street. We now move on to Grove Hill, a council estate. Mam and Dad got a council house there, 10 Eason Street. Mam and Dad must have thought they'd died and gone to heaven. Number 10 had a front garden and a massive back garden. Three bedrooms, toilet and bathroom upstairs, plus an extra toilet downstairs. It was nice. We had a big common at the back of our back garden. It had four alleyways leading to it. It was surrounded on all four sides by houses. At the bottom of Eason Street was a church, which was once connected to an infant and junior school. This was St Joseph's. My two older sisters, Eileen and Pat, were in the juniors, and I went into the infants. It was a nice school. It was run by nuns. Sister Mary Batiste and Sister Mary Hillary. I found them okay. People said they were too strict. My sister Pat said they were evil. She said when she was naughty, they'd lock her in a dark cupboard. I wasn't a naughty kid at the time. <laughs> so I never saw any of that. Eason Street had lots of families with kids. Number two, right next to one of the alleyways, was where Mrs Hall lived with two sons, Peter and John. Over the road was a family similar to ours, the Henman family, boys and girls of similar ages to our family. A couple of doors down, Mrs Green and her son David. Then, next right door to the Halfpenny pub was the Hawkins family. Their dad was called Soss. They had a house full of girls. Directly opposite them, was Teresa Walsh and her four boys, Danny, Billy, John and Patsy. All the kids in Eason Street got on OK. We spent our time playing Kirby or on the common building dens. 
Only the Walsh family kids went to St Joseph's with us. The other families went to Martin Grove School. Martin Grove School looked like a prison. Now our family was growing. Mam had my younger sister, our Teresa, then our Billy. Not long after followed our Terry. It was followed by the baby of our family, our Christopher. I don't know how we would have coped in Tomlinson Street with only two bedrooms. In Eason Street, we had to top and tail, so imagine the two up, two down in Tomlinson Street. Mam had been having a bad time with her pregnancies, each one getting worse, to the point where she nearly died having Christopher. I was now enjoying school. We had toast for breakfast, toast for supper, no pizza shops them days. We had our dinner at school. We were on free school dinners. Our dad, nine out of ten days, would cook our tea. Our dad was a practising Catholic. This meant confession on a Friday and mass on a Sunday. We all went to both, with the exception of our mam. Because of her problems with her pregnancies, she got sterilised. The church wouldn't condone this. In a roundabout way, the church barred her. I don't think she'll have been bothered like. Dad was still a docker, and it was still a poorly paid job. We used to get home visits from the priest at Easter and Christmas. The priest would bring us food hampers. I thought it was because we were good Catholics. But as I got older, I realised it was because we were poor. We never went hungry, though. Our mum and dad always cooked good meals. Pie crust, mince and dumplings, panacle tea, and good old egg and chips. I was getting older now. Eileen and Pat are now at St Thomas's Senior School, and I'm now at the Juniors at St Joseph's. I was a very quiet kid. In class I sat back and never volunteered. I wasn't the brightest. The English teacher, Miss McClatton, took a shine to me. I would go to her house on a Sunday tea time. I'd have tea with her and her ma'am. Proper cakes from the shop. Not like ma'am's homemade jam tarts. It was Miss McClatton who encouraged me to become an altar boy. I actually enjoyed it. I felt important in my nice crisp black and white. We used to walk in the Corpus Christi every year. I walked with the altar boys. Every Catholic school in Middlesbrough walked in the Corpus Christi. It was massive. It was from one end of Middlesbrough, starting at the cathedral over the border St Hilda's, to the top end of Linthorpe Road, Sacred Heart Church. The streets all the way along the procession would be ten deep. There's a photo of me in one of these processions in my altar boy clobber, climbing on the railings outside the cathedral. With me is a couple of altar boys from St Joseph's. Jimmy Watson, solicitor who worked on the Lee Duffy case murder. Harry Hatfield, police prosecutor. And Adrian Stainsby, police officer, who I think went on to be a school teacher. Life seemed good, until one day when I came home. I heard Miss McClatton, our Paris priest, can't remember his name, and our dad talking about me. To keep it short, they were discussing me going to some sort of school for boys only to train towards becoming a priest. The church would fund it. I was only a kid. I didn't really understand what they meant. All I know is that I shit myself. I love being an altar boy. But a priest? Oh, God, no. They didn't know I'd listened at the door. From that day onwards, I started to miss church. I got to the stage where I stopped going to church altogether and I never served on the altar again. I got earache off my dad, but the priest thing was never mentioned again. Deep down, I think my dad was over the moon. The only other good memories of the juniors were me and Brian Crotchet going to the school disco on a Friday tea time in the school dinner hall. It had gym benches all the way round and our arses never left them. We had no rhythm. I always remember what was number one in the charts. Sugar Sugar by the Archies. <laughs> I'm now 11 years old and St Thomas's is my next venture and I'm nervous. <laughs>